do we ever use phrases that sound really good, sound religious, but they don't have any biblical support? Hi, I'm Ken Yates from Grace Evangelical Society, and I have something to share with you on this topic. You know, in the New Testament, we read about the religious leaders, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, particularly the Pharisees. And they would have certain phrases, certain things that belong to their oral traditions. And Jesus, of course, was constantly fighting against those traditions because they were not in the scriptures. So are we ever guilty as Christians of doing the same thing? In other words, do we have what I would call Christianese that we use? Christian phrases that sound like they're biblical, but they're not. I think we do. Just recently, I was in a Bible study or a, a class in a Bible college, and the teacher used this phrase, and the phrase is one that probably we've all heard before, and it was, if Jesus ain't Lord of all, he ain't Lord of at all. And of course, he was using this lordship salvation phrase that we often hear. And people use that phrase to say, basically, unless you're willing to give Jesus everything, if he ain't Lord of all, then he ain't Lord at all. And this particular teacher was a lordship teacher. And so he had probably used this phrase many times in his life. He had certainly heard it because he was quoting it. And it's one that, again, we've heard many times. But it was interesting because when he said it, he stopped. And he thought for a second, and he goes, you know, I'm not sure I like that phrase. <laughs> and I found that very interesting. And the class had a discussion about that. Is that a true statement? If Jesus ain't Lord of all, then he ain't Lord at all. And when people use it to say, if you're not willing to make him Lord of your life and everything, then you're not really saved or you can't be saved. You're not ready to be saved. You're not ready to believe because he's got to be Lord of everything. And he was quoting a well-known Lordship salvation teacher at the time. And in the class, we brought it up. Can anybody say that? Can, can any Christian say that Jesus is Lord of every area of my life? Even the original Lordship teacher that this guy was quoting from, we ask, is Jesus Lord of every area of his life? If that's a true statement, if Jesus ain't Lord of all, then he ain't Lord at all, then which one of us can say that we're believers? Which one of us can say that we have eternal life? We talked about it in class as well. Can somebody, for example, who's on their cell phone eight hours a day, can they say that Jesus is Lord of every area of their life? Or can the person who gossips, can they say, Jesus is Lord of every area of my life? If we even go even further, many young men in the church have a habit of looking at pornography. Can, can we say that they have Jesus as Lord of every area of their life? I think this is really instructive because this is just one example, and of course, there's many others, where we can look at something and we, we can say, you know, we use that phrase or we hear that phrase, but how does it stand up against scriptures? Just like the oral traditions of the Pharisees in the New Testament, and you know there were many things, many quotes that they would use, they didn't measure up to what the scriptures had to say. And it's the same way with this particular phrase. And in the class, they realized it. I think every person in the class came away saying, you know, when we first heard that phrase, it sounded really, really good. It sounded real spiritual. But a closer, a closer look at it shows, no, it's not true at all. To say that Jesus must be Lord of all in order to be saved, you must make him Lord of your life. 
That's not what the scriptures say. Certainly Jesus never said that. In the gospel of John, over and over again, Jesus says, he who believes in me has eternal life. It is by God's grace that is a gift. It's not something that we get by making Jesus Lord of every area of our lives. It is completely by his grace. And this is no minor thing. Because that particular phrase, unless Jesus is Lord of all, he ain't Lord at all, that's a changing of the gospel. That is a gospel of works. That is telling the unbeliever, in order to receive eternal life, you have to make him Lord of your life. And that is a changing of the scriptures itself. And so in this example, I think what we see is Sometimes we need to evaluate the phrases that we use. And this is just one of them. I think there's many others, and you, you're probably thinking of them as well. Inviting Jesus into your life. Making Jesus sit on the throne of your heart. You know, these kind of phrases that we use. And again, they're very religious sounding and they're very holy sounding. But as in all things, we have to evaluate them by what the scriptures have to say. I was really excited being in that class because this particular class, the students were fairly young and they were able to see that phrase, even though we've heard it, is just Christianese. It's just a phrase that people use without thinking about it. So I just think this is a, an example of we need to be careful of phrases that we hear and we use and we pass on without evaluating them according to the scriptures. Sometimes our phrases can even be in a, deni a denial of the grace of the gospel of eternal life that Jesus offers as a free gift. If you've liked this, I would uh, ask you to press the like button. And if you really liked it, the subscribe button. And remember, keep grace in focus. <music>